viewers Hi. welcome back Hi. to mom and jess talk show so this is another interesting episode in the women's series and we have an amazing one of god mrs betty ajibade right yes. to do justice to this topic it's titled the remarkable woman the remarkable woman i'm excited to learn and i'm sure that you are too so just before we start this discussion, please remember to subscribe, hit that subscription button to keep you in line of subsequent episode. And with that being said, please stay tuned, grab whatever you got, and let's catch up with Mrs. Betty. Men, you are welcome to Mom and Jess. Talk Thank show. you for your for your invitation. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Thanks for having me in your lovely home, and um, we trust that God will do His best and lives will be blessed. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And by the way, look. Gorgeous. Thank you very much. <laughs> so let's hit the show without further ado. A remarkable woman. Man, what is a remarkable Who is a remarkable woman? Uh, a remarkable woman for me is somebody that knows her purpose right. and her destiny and pursuing that purpose and destiny with all that he or she, or, or, or she got. Right. A woman of purpose is a, is a remarkable woman. Hmm. A woman of purpose is a remarkable woman. Viewers, I'm sure you've got that. So with that being said, we'd love to also understand what it takes to be a remarkable woman. I'm sure viewers want to know more. What qualities, what attributes, what characteristics, you know, does it take to stand out as a remarkable woman? Okay, starting with that, I would say that a woman that that is born into this world has a purpose. One of the great assets of a woman is her womb. Mm. And a woman can birth anything. Right. So for every woman that is coming into this world, God has given them a purpose. And one of the purpose is to have a womb and to carry things through. Mm. You use your womb to carry children for nine months and you birth them into the world. The same way your goal and your purpose in life, your destiny is life, you are going to also womb, womb such and even bring it to life. Mm. So for a woman, she has many purposes. Because she can have more than one. A womb can carry many children. We have children that are, we have women that have like fifteen children. Oh, yeah, but true. there is one that I heard of that have eighteen children. So this womb that God gave us, He gave us physically, and we also have a spiritual womb, and yeah. that is where we process our destiny and birth it. Oh, a yeah. lot of us women think that it is only our children and our husband. And by the way, most time that is our first destiny. Right. Whenever we get into marriage, our children and our husband, they are our first destiny. But there is still much more because our womb is complex. Our womb can birth as much children, physically and spiritually, as much as possible because it's a special guide that God has inserted into us women. Mm. So for a woman to be a remarkable woman, that womb, you must use it to birth the purpose of God. Mm. And what is the purpose of God? The purpose of God is your destiny. That That's which true. you have come into this world to achieve and to fulfill for God and for the glory of God. Mm. That, that is, wow. the, that is wow. how and wow. that is what entails a remarkable woman. Mm. You was just a recap. Every woman has a womb, not only to birth you know, children, but to birth destinies, to birth greatness, to bring a lot of things that God has proposed for us into manifestation. And I pray that to be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. So thank, um, thanks for that um, interesting note. We would love to also move further to understand because, you know, there are a lot of women that are limiting themselves probably to their career only. I understand that through career, we can also bet our purpose. What steps could they begin to take to stand up and excel and be remarkable? You know, beyond just probably their career or businesses, what other steps could they take in proceeding to birth this purpose you have? For, for a purpose. woman, it is very, very important for you to know God first. Right. You need to be a child of God. You need to be born again. Mm. Once you are able to know God, hear God, and walk according to His will, your destiny will be birthed mm. through your womb, through mm. your own doings through God helping you and directing you. So for a woman to actually, you know, being able to birth 
their purpose and being able to use their will to achieve the purpose and the glory of God, they need to know God. They need to work according to his precepts. They need to listen. Mm. Whether in the, in the place of prayer, in the place of studying the word, in the place of attending right. with the other children of God, in the place of fellowshipping with others, right. in the place of secret players, mm. 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 that is where we can actually know, know our destiny. Some women, it is their husband and their children that is their first destiny. Mm. We have a lot of women out there, their home is not safe and they go about evangelizing. Mm. How can you leave your home? Your home should you should you should be twenty four seven in your home first. Mm -hmm. Every member of your household must be born again before you can step out and be winning others. Mm -hmm. So even for a woman that is passionate about God, your your passion must start from your home. Some women, their husband is not even born again, and they are living under the same roof. How come fire must spread in the house before it will go out? First. So we realize that in, in, in a situation where a woman actually wants to achieve or be a remarkable woman, then her home first must be handed over to the Lord. She must be a woman that listens to the heartbeat of God, mm. that hears instruction, mm. because it is in your purpose that you can actually fulfill or be a true remarkable woman. So hearing God is very, very important and fellowshipping with God and other brethren will mm. actually make us to know exactly what we have to do and that is where our being remarkable lies mm. so we can't be sh shading shadows to have a chasing shadow rather neither can we be doing follow follow following others because everybody is online i must be online because everybody is you know doing this i have to do it too mm. because this is in vogue i have to no you must mm. know your purpose pursue it with all passion even when you are not having a lot of people you know commending you but once you have established the fact that this is what God told me and I'm doing it, that is where your purpose lies. That is where your rest lies. That is where your peace lies. And that is where your greatness also lies. Mm. Wow. 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 We need to take time to digest this. And I believe that you watching also, you know, we need time to reflect. We pray the Lord will help us, you know, discovering our uniqueness. Probably it's online, it's offline, it's just the family ministry because I believe that our family is the first ministry yes we shouldn't you know we shouldn't stop with the family but you know it should begin with the family god has people have to witness the fear of god and the spirit of god existing and manifesting through our homes and our families and may that be our portion in the name of jesus Amen. so moving on we'll also under, try to like to understand you know the consequences of you know women that are not remarkably standing out what could be the likely consequences if you choose to be a mediocre or you know you are not able to remarkably identify you know your place of purpose as a woman you know in this end, end time because i as my own perspective i've always been perspective of the word of god but in the, my own intention i've always been intention of god my own idea has always been god's idea any other idea is by the way mm. so for a woman that refuses to be remarkable in what God has called you. You know, I was talking about the fact that she must hear from God. Mm -hmm. After hearing from God, because God is not a liar, mm -hmm. He will provide everything that you need to achieve it. But if you now allow the enemy, maybe the enemy comes in, maybe through our own carelessness, and we are we found ourselves, you know, as what am I doing? I'm not achieving what God wants me to achieve. We should still go back to God. Mm -hmm. We still need to go back to Him. Mm -hmm. And because he's the only one that, no matter what, it's like you are writing a paper or you are writing a book. If you leave it, whenever you are coming back, you, you still continue where you left yeah, it. Stopped. You can always continue. Mm. So for those that I do not even know at all, for any of our viewers that they were like, ha, what is it? Is it just waking up, cooking for my husband alone? I want you to know that you can actually be what God wants you to be. You can actually go to the level that God wants you to be because your children are looking at you. Your family members are looking at you, those that you have professed the name of God in front of them. They are watching you closely. They will see whether this woman is going to make it or not, whether she's going to impact her generation. And that is why you must not fail. So the impact is enormous because this is God's end time and we must be in the program. Any woman that refuses to be part of this end time program will be a waste. I pray in Jesus' name we shall not be a waste in the name of Amen. Jesus. In our own little way, the end time agenda is like a big puzzle. Mm. 
Mm. We all have a part in it. Once I click my own, it will be easy for others to also click their own. But if I refuse to click my own part of the puzzle, the puzzle still remains scattered. Mm. So mm. we must not look down on anyone. If I have yeah. three children and God expressly told me that I should take care of these children, I should pray for them every day, I should, this is your purpose, this is your destiny. I should do it because I don't know where those children are going. Mm, we true. don't know what agenda God has for them in this end time. Mm, mm. So no part of the agenda or the program is too small. So for a woman, I'm talking to you this morning, if whatever reason God showed you something and you are thinking it's not enough, just pursue it. It is a need that your greatness lies. It is a need that God is going to show for himself. Because your refuser can have a very great impact. Mm. negative impact for that matter mm. and i pray this morning none of us will lose our purpose and our destiny in the name of jesus amen amen wow this is mind-blowing man let's just divert a bit there's something that caught my attention while you were speaking because i believe that you know as we hear the mind of god concerning whatever purpose he has laid in our hearts sometimes he's being misunderstood by even the society you find yourself some might think you are blind, some might, you know, it might just be a form of mockery or persecution or whatsoever. But I believe that if truly you understand what God has destined for you, you will stand strong. So I don't, uh, I just wish to know, and I believe that viewers will also learn from this. In a situation where you feel like, because I was listening to a message by Joshua Selman earlier this morning, you know, I love his teachings a lot, and he was talking about greatness that, you know, for someone to um, be great in whatever God has laid in their hearts to do and excel, that it is you are bound to face persecutions. Not everyone will like what you're doing. Some will misunderstand it, especially if it's going if it's an online thing. You know, some will think you're just showing up or you just want to show the whole world that you know this. There are several misunderstandings that might come up from it. So, please, ma'am, can you just help us throw more light on this? How does a woman, you know, that is still coming up in discovering all that God has laid in her heart, probably also having mentors and people that she, you know, she is following after. How can she also, you know, try to bring out or birth this greatness, this um, remarkable, you know, thing that God has implanted in her, despite, you know, the challenges, because the challenges could be the persecutions, it could be the um, ridicule, being ridiculed and, you know, all of that, which can discourage some people to go back to their shell or withdraw from what God has laid in their heart, withdraw from those visions that God has laid in their heart, just simply be misunderstood by people they find around them. Please, man, what word do you have for such kind of people? I'm going to direct such people first to the word of God. Okay. The Bible says that we have not been given the spirit of fear, mm. of sound mind. True. Mm. Because in the face of persecution, even Jesus Christ promised us persecution. Right. That in all these things we are going to be persecuted. He said, as we, a, 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 a servant is not greater than the master. Mm. Whenever they persecuted him, definitely we are also going to be persecuted. But the most important thing in all this is for us to know the voice of God. That this thing that I'm doing, is it God that actually wants me to do it? Mm. Because I can I have also been an example. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to give you details here, but I know what God told me. I know what I've seen. The dates, documented, highly documented, everything that I've seen. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm in my marriage, what I'm supposed to be doing in the marriage, everything, detail. So now, who is now going to tell me, oh, this is otherwise? Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Because I know the voice of God. Whenever I'm doubting, it will come back and it's tell me, and do this, do this, do that. And immediately I do it, I see things, you know. Mm, so over time, I've developed a relationship with God to the extent that I know when He's speaking. I know. So any other persecution outside that, I don't actually move. It doesn't move. It doesn't move you. Because I know that He that, that is with me is more than He mm, that is in the world. Oh. Because the devil has a way of discouraging us mm -hmm. so that we will not be able to achieve the will and the purpose of God for our life. Mm. He has a way of discouraging us. Mm. He's a master class in discouragement. And that is why we believers, we must not give in. We must at every time, you know, be on our guard. So even when people are, because at times I'm telling you it can be very doubting and it can be very painful. <laughs> Absolutely. I know, I know what you're talking about. Very painful. When people don't actually understand you, even when the Holy Spirit did not even give you utterance to go and speak. Mm. You know that sometimes somebody misunderstood me 
I feel like going to the person and explain myself. But the spirit of God said, no. You don't have to. I was restricted and I have to just hold mm. my peace. Start praying for the failure. Mm. You know? So we should we should be a woman of spirit, a woman, a warrior woman, a woman that prays every time for us to be able to actually impact our generation. Mm. You know, no matter how much we try, we can't actually do it on our own. That's true. We need we God help to help us. We need God to direct us. So even when discouragement comes, when mm. people laugh at us, when it seems like even brethren that are supposed to support us, they were all against us, mm. laughing and joking with what God has placed in our hands, we should not bother about them. When we feel discouraged, when we feel depressed, we should call on the Holy Spirit. He knows how to encourage mm. us. He knows how to, you know, in a compassionate manner, bring us out of any depression or discouragement we may be. That's true. And that is the key mm. to that. Because there is no way, not everybody will key in, especially when it's, it's a new generation thing. Mm. Mm. Like what you are doing, my sister, right now. Some, a lot of people may frown at it. But then, this is, a, this is, going, this is a, like a womb. It's going to back something great. That was going to impact our generation, impact this land that we are where we are. So once it is God that said the word, please, my my dear viewers, women in particular, mm. move for it. Mm. Don't mm. allow the persecution to discourage you. You can actually achieve this. Amen. Thank you so much, Ben, for that um, encouragement. Because uh, as I listened to the message today, it actually encouraged me. You know, I believe that whatever the Lord has laid in our hearts to do, and um, Definitely, not everyone will be in support. Definitely, you know, and that is something I believe that with time the Holy Spirit is teaching me because I believe that if 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 God has said it, then He will energize you. He will you know He will build the capacity for you to do it. But for other women that are watching, our guest has already encouraged you all. In case you are doubting yourself and you know the mind of God, the mind of God comes with confirmations. Yes, he will say it, you will hear it. And then if you ask for confirmations, he will give you through the scripture. There are times that I will just feel like, you know, ah, no, God, I'm done, I'm discouraged, you know, I just, and then the scripture will come up in my heart. I will check and to, to just be exactly the scripture I need, you know, to strengthen me and to keep me going. So as our, as our sister has encouraged you, I believe that whatever the Lord has laid in your heart, if it's an online thing, don't be discouraged by whatever anybody is saying that you're only blessing online and you're not. God is seeing the heart. You know, yes. God is seeing the heart. He knows what you're doing, both in your home and outside of your home, whether virtually or physically. Let God reward you and we shouldn't depend on men pleasers. I think that is where... Um, you know, people get it all wrong or yeah. people get most discouraged when you don't get that physical encouragement and support. So I pray the Lord will help every woman, not only me, Sister Betty here with us, and every woman out there. Mm -hmm. If your ministry is starting from your home, basically from your children, I believe that there are some people that probably is just their children because God is raising nations in that home. Mm -hmm. Then you settle for it, you know. So moving on, this will be our last question because there's been issue of comparison and competition and envy you know that is gen it's, 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 it's common among women and i'm sorry to say this i'm also a woman but i believe that you know women we have this tendency that when we see somebody doing something it's not like the person is showing up or the person has any intention to rub it on your face but you feel this tingly you know there's this tingly of envy and you know it takes the grace of god for you to like you know cast it away because you know that that is from the pit of hell yeah. so what advice do you have you know for for us as women, myself inclusive, to do away with any spirit of unhealthy competition, you know, like things like, oh, is she the only one that knows? I also know God. Is the only how God is speaking to? You know, it will have encounters like that in the scripture, you know, because when we start that, that is where envy and hatred will begin. So what word do you have for such um, kind of situation or, you know? Um, for women that are feeling like inferiority complex. Right. And for so those that are always being drawn into competition, mm. it still boils down to who you are in God, right. who you are in Christ. If you actually know who you are, you won't be bothered by what anybody do. Mm. And like I said earlier too, if you can actually hear from God, if you know the voice of God, it will call you back even when you are hearing. Even when you are straying, it will quickly call you back. It will quickly let you know that, no, mm. this is not the way for you. No. Don't fall into depression. No, you don't need to jealous this person. Mm. I'm the one that says she should be doing this. Mm. It will actually even bring people to come to meet you. Mm. That will support what you are doing. Mm. People that will willingly from their heart 
support what you are doing. You know, I remember one of my sister in church, she's into teenagers ministry, go to secondary school and all. And God, the Holy Spirit ministered to me to be supporting her. Oh. And she was so surprised. I said, yes, I made tracts. I wrote tracts for her. You know, about nakedness, nudity, salvation, and so on and so forth. And prayerfully, I wrote those tracts. Anytime she's going, she will call me. I will be praying for her. She will mm. go and she will, she will go have testimony and so on and, and so on forth. She mm. was so impressed. And even myself, I was fulfilled. I was happy. You know that we are because part of I was part of it. And thank God that God used me for her. Mm. You know, I was a lot of time I wanted to go with her, but I'm unable to. And just tell her, please, when you are going, let me know. And I will start praying for her when she's there. And you know, she mm. always comes back with big testimony so a lot of time we should know what god when mm, we can hear god what, what is, i can't be jealous of her because i know what god says that's what god is called god mm. asked me to support her mm. not for me to go and start my own mm. you know mm, mm. so it's very good for us women to know who we are in christ so actually know what god called us to do when we know Sometimes. when you viewer when you know what god called you to do mm. you have confidence wow to stand and nothing will wave you, nothing will move you. Mm -hmm. Even when others are becoming success, you know that, yes, this is my own success. Mm -hmm. God has already given me my own success. So you won't be bothered. Mm -hmm. So it is when unhealthy, unhealthy you know, feeling comes, it shows lack of knowledge. It shows lack of you understanding, you know, understanding of who you are in God. Mm -hmm. Because if you actually know who you are in God, there will Don't be, be any need for that. No shaking. Because you will know that God has already placed this. Even the God that God gave you, have, you have not have finished. finished it. So how will I now be chasing others? Mm. So I pray this morning, the grace to stand mm. firm and be secured in God. The Lord will give it to us in Amen. Jesus' name. You know, let, I want to share an experience with you. There is this mommy that I know when I was in Nigeria. She had seven children. Mm. And she said, these children, they are my life. God told me that every day I must be praying for all of them. Mm. When they say, ah, let's go to mountain, she said, no, God has not asked me to do that. When you say, ah, mommy, ah, this thing, they are selling it, maybe you should start selling it. She said, no, God has not told me. No. She continued to be dedicated to these children. And my sister, out of those seven children, four of them are pastors. Wow. Four. Wow. Are pastors. And two of the ladies are a, a wife to a pastor. <laughs> so the whole house is, is pastor. So you, you can imagine mm. if she did not do that work very mm. well. She, the plan of God is messed up. Mm. Because those family they are going to lead the people of God. Mm. That's true. Now so, I've heard of a similar story too where a woman was called, her ministry was just basically the family and you know, and she focused on that and truly it yielded the result. So it's, it, I, I, I can I can confirm to that. So wow. viewers, we don't need to jump to be jealous of each other. Some mm. of us, we are having great people in our house, in our family, as our children, our brother, our sisters. Once we can actually pattern what God is planning and what God is doing, and that is why the place of prayer is important. Mm. You need to pray to see the face of God. Don't let whatever anybody does move you, mm, because yeah. God always has bigger things. Mm. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has in store for mm. those mm. who love him. And you love God, so definitely... Great things are waiting hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our viewers, I'm sure you are blessed already. Man, please, can you give us a take home to wrap up the session? From my side here, I will say that prayer is essential. Whether your ministry is your family or your ministry is out there, prayer is paramount. One thing that God has called me women to do is to be prayerful. A woman that is having a womb hmm. needs prayer to birth ideas need prayer to birth nation need prayer to birth you know things that is going to change our our, our generation mm. so for me from my side today please don't take prayer with levity take it with all seriousness every opportunity mm. i say pray mm. because it's clear road it makes your eyes to see more it mm. makes your heart to hear god mm. and your ear to open mm. thank you amen amen, amen. viewers are blessed and i'm sure you are blessed too on this note, we'll end this episode. I pray that every man watching this, God will begin to minister to you. Build a relationship with God so he begins to minister to you. What exactly? And you know, and for us to remain there. And in case you've known what God has led you to, you pray for sustenance, you know. 
and any what any in any way you have been distracted or detracted you go back you know you go back to the drawing board i pray the lord will help us to redeem those wells if there's any way we have you know lost track of what god has proposed in our lives for us to redeem our wells and you know go back to the drawing board and you know seek the face of god for direction and i pray the lord will help us in this purpose journey that we're all going as women in jesus name Amen. So, um, remain blessed and you know i pray you be that remarkable woman that god expects from you god bless you and see you next episode Bye. Bye.